Okay, radio TV phono nut here, and hopefully a quick video. This is an educational industries corporation model 100 classroom record player from 1980. This was one of the cheaper models. Has a three speed Matt Schuster drive mechanism, which I don't really care for, but it could be worse. But at least it has the nice metal aesthetic tone arm. It uses an 89T PowerPoint cartridge, and yes, I've already done all of the all the usual routine maintenance to this, and it works. But the you can tell the cartridge is getting tired, and it's a dual LP stylus. It doesn't have a 78 needle on the other side, which I don't like. Also sounds like it's running a tad bit fast to my ears, but maybe not, I don't know, but a lot of these cheaper drive mechanisms tend to run a little fast. But anyway, what I would like to do is upgrade the 89T cartridge to something else. Now back in the day I could buy these plug-in 89T needle cartridge combinations for about five dollars and some change at the local parts house. But unfortunately, that's not the case today. Now they no longer make the traditional LP and 78 flip style cartridge. You have to go with new old stock, and you're looking at about 25 bucks for something with a sapphire tip that will wear out quickly, and then you're back to spending 25 bucks for another uh, plug-in cartridge assembly. The only thing new being made in the 89T variety is the green 78 only version or the red LP only version but still you're looking at about 15 or 20 dollars a piece for those and I don't like the idea of having to physically unplug a cartridge to and swap needles just for different types of records so we have this Fansteel P226 cartridge that's basically a Barco TN4B knockoff it's a stereo cartridge that so will have to be wired for mono for use in these types of players. But the advantage is it uses a replaceable needle that when it wears out, you're, you're only spending five or six bucks for a new needle versus 20 or 25 for a whole new cartridge. And these are a little bit more compliant than what was originally in here, so a little bit less damage to your records. The only disadvantage is the original cartridge puts out 1.3 volts, while this one only puts out about a half a volt. So we usually have to do a little modification to the amp in order to get the best results out of it. Here's the 89T cartridge. As you can see, the whole gold thing here just plugs into this black holder. And it was a good concept back in the day because if a kid accidentally dropped the tone arm on a record or and broke the needle or whatever you didn't have to or broke the cartridge you didn't have to send the unit out for repair the teacher could just plug in a new cartridge and be right back in business but that was the old days when these were cheap and plentiful they're really not so practical in 2016 okay, here's our bracket installed that's the easiest part now before I solder these cartridge connector pins onto the wires I'll just say that they can sometimes be very stubborn to slide over the pins on the cartridge here because these are you know, cheap Chinese cartridges which I'd rather not use but that's all that's available so we have to make the best of what we have and the pins don't always slide over the easiest so here's a dud cartridge here that I keep on hand just for uh, sliding the new pins over the pins on this cartridge the new uh, connecting pins just to get everything rounded and in shape and that way whenever I slide them onto the good cartridge it won't be as difficult. Okay here's our terminals prepared and you might no take note that I use the dud cartridge to do this it makes it a lot simpler you should never solder to the terminals while they're plugged onto a good cartridge or else the heat will ruin the element inside the cartridge 
Now I'll carefully use my small screwdriver to slide these terminals off. Carefully slide them over the new cartridge pins. Clip the cartridge in place. And then we'll have to adjust this counterbalance spring for the correct tracking pressure. And this one's very easy to do. You just take it out of this notch and move it up a couple more notches until you get it where it needs to be. Okay, it's in there. And apparently we have some action. Okay, we have it installed and set for uh, 5 grams. The recommended tracking pressure on this particular cartridge is between 4 and 8 grams. So 5 ought to be sufficient and that still tracks lighter than what the 89T tracked I at. Uh, they usually track in the 8 gram range. Sounds pretty good, but it's still a little bit lacking in volume. So let's open it up and see what we can do about that. If you look right here, you'll see the cartridge input leads and shunted across there is a resistor that measures about 400k ohms on the meter. We should be able to remove that resistor from circuit and that should give us enough uh, gain to compensate for the newer lower output cartridge. And by the way, not much to this amplifier. It's just based on a single LM382IC, which is probably good for about oh, one and a half watts, two watts maybe at best. Okay, I now have it about to the same volume level as what it was to begin with with the 89T cartridge. I remove the shunt resistor across the cartridge input and then I lifted a ceramic disc capacitor that's across the actual input of the integrated circuit and we now seem to be doing pretty good. Now I will say that it's been my experience that as far as the solid state classroom record players, these off-brand kind here are easier to modify. The ones such as Califone and Audiotronics and Newcomb, they they seem to be a little bit harder to deal with. And some of those you might actually have to construct a preamp circuit for those. The tube type models, they're a lot easier to deal with. They're a lot easier to modify since they're on a hand wire chassis. You can do that a lot easier with those. And one other thing I forgot to mention is the 89T cartridge that was in here was non-compliant when it comes to stereo records with a lot of bass. They skipped like crazy. But this cartridge here seems to be more compliant and it plays a bass intensive stereo record without any problem and I'll demonstrate that now. Good to go for a while now. Well, as I often do, I did a little more experimenting and I uh, Got a little bit better results here by modifying the value of another resistor. And then I put one of the capacitors back in place. Well, let me show you the results first, and then I'll show you what I did. That's a lot better. Now, let me show you what the final final verdict is. Okay, here's the resistor that was shunted across the cartridge. It's about, what, 400K ohm. We left that out of circuit. We originally removed this capacitor from circuit, which goes from 
one side of the input terminal of the IC chip to ground, there's this resistor here that goes from the center terminal of the volume control to the input terminal of the chip. The original value was 1.5 mega ohm. I decreased that value to 220k ohm and put this capacitor back in circuit. And now we have a have a nice volume level now, and it sounds a little bit better. And I also replaced this capacitor at the speaker coupling cap. I went from a 100 microfarad up to a 220 microfarad that gave us a little more bass. I didn't don't want to go crazy there because we don't want the bass to be so excessive that it causes feedback, which can happen in these little tabletop record players. Baby, I need you. You're the only one I care about. Maybe I'm a crazy, but I just can't live without your love and affection. Giving me direction. Okay, that for real ought to do it this time. I think we have this thing working rather well, don't you? Alright, thanks for watching and hope you got something out of this.